So at the moment, if we want to measure what the brain's doing, if we want to measure brain function, there are a few ways of doing it, but one way is magnetoencephalography, or, or MEG. The idea of MEG is that we measure magnetic fields that exist outside the head that are generated by current flow in the brain. And in that way, we can work out what the brain was doing at any one time. The problem with current MEG scanners um, is that they're very large, they're very bulky, and they're one size fits all. The gap in the market, if that's the right expression, is for a scanner where, which you can wear on your head. So you put it on like a helmet, you can wear it on your head whilst we're acquiring brain imaging data. So to build a wearable imaging system, uh, you really need two things. You need very, very sensitive magnetic field sensors that are small, lightweight, and that can go on the head, and that's what we had with the quantum sensors. And then you need a way to house them on the head. And so to do that, we built a 3D printed head cast um, that would house the quantum sensors close to the scalp, uh, and that was designed based on a single subject's head shape. I volunteered to be that subject, and yeah, that's, so this helmet accommodates 13 sensors which are over the motor region, the right motor region of my brain, and putting it all together, um, it just fits. Is it comfortable? Yeah, so it fits perfectly in my head. The quantum sensors give us the magnetic fields that are produced by our brain at any one time. And by knowing also the location of these sensors with respect to the brain, we can localize which area of the brain was responsible for the movement and also when that part of the brain was uh, engaged and that in that certain task. Ideally, we would be looking at something more generic, like something like a bike helmet, which could be adaptable to any, anyone's head size uh, and could just hold um, the sensors without having to build something specifically for, for just one person. There are a number of challenges, but probably the biggest one we had was uh, reducing the Earth's magnetic field. So if you want somebody to be able to move with a scanner on their head, and that scanner's measuring magnetic fields, you need to somehow remove the Earth's magnetic field. So when they told me on day one that my job was going to be to remove the Earth's magnetic field, that sounded more like a joke they tell to new starters than anything else. The way we went about this was to build these new electromagnetic coils that um, produce fields that are equal and opposite to the Earth's magnetic field. So the mathematics required to design these coils to reduce the magnetic field is actually quite, um, quite complex, it's quite a large challenge, but then once you've got past all of that, the actual making of the coils is bits of wood, bits of masking tape, bits of glue and bits of wire, so it's a massive contrast really in what, you, what you're doing. They're um, housed on two planes, either side of the subject, so you've got one going down here, one going down here. And that keeps the scanner quite open, you can walk in and out of it. Crucially, it meant that the sensors wouldn't fail if the subject moved, even by a tiny amount. And that meant that um, any information we were getting from the sensors we knew was coming from the brain and that we would be able to do these cool experiments. With this new technology, um, scanning babies, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, four-year-olds um, is going to become possible. So that brings into play um, a number of different disorders like epilepsy but also um, things like autism I think um, we'll, we'll suddenly be able to to really start seeing the neural substrates that underlie these these disorders in children. So I get this, rid of this. <laughs> <laughs>